Okay, so absolute value is something we're gonna start this year and then you do it more next year. So when I teach it to you, keep in mind not to forget it so I don't have to reteach it to you next year. Got it? Because that is uh, something that sometimes happens. Okay, absolute value is symbolized with these flat brackets. That means the absolute value of. Okay, so they're flat brackets. That's what they are <clears throat> of whatever's inside. So I think of absolute value as thinking about distance. Okay, so for instance, if you're going to drive to Rosenfeld, let's say that that is five kilometers that we would go north so a plus five versus Gretna would be a minus five because it's five kilometers south but in a context of distance it doesn't matter if you go a plus five distance or a negative five distance because you're still going a distance of five so if you are in physics maybe you would understand it's the magnitude of the number without the direction. So I don't care if it's a plus or a minus five, I care that it's a magnitude of five. Okay, does that make sense? Without the direction part. Okay, so here's number one. The absolute of three is three. Has a magnitude of three. The absolute of negative three three. It's like walls. Yeah, it's like brackets, but they're square. Okay, so mathematically, we have to treat them like brackets. So I'm going to do inside the brackets first. So what do you have inside the brackets? What's two subtract seven? That's negative five. So in the brackets is negative five. Then, what's the absolute value of negative 5? Five? 5. So in the brackets, 10 subtract 2 is 8. What's the absolute value of 8? Eight? 8. Okay. Bed mass says I have to do brackets and then multiply, divide, then add, da, da, da. Okay, so brackets, what is the absolute value of negative 15? 15. Then what does this mean to you? Then we're going to times by negative 1 after the brackets. So this result is negative because that's out of the bracket situation. Okay, do you see the difference? So when you think absolutes can't be negative, this is true, except for now this is a negative out, out of the bracket. Okay, I want you to think about this. What could I have had in this bracket to produce a four? The absolute value of what could have worked? The absolute value of four? Or what else could I have had? Negative four. Okay, number two. The inside of the brackets, so this time the bracket says 2x. So the inside of the bracket could have equaled, what could I have had in there? I could have had a 10, or what else could I have had in the bracket? Uh, yeah, for x, but I'm saying the inside of the bracket could be a 10. Yeah, so I'm just saying the inside of the bracket right now, not the solution. You're ahead a step yet. So the inside of the bracket could have been a 10. 
or the inside of the bracket could have been a negative 10, which makes x be a 5 or negative 5. Okay, so this is inside the bracket, so x minus 2 is in the bracket. What could I have had in that bracket? 5 or negative 5. Right, because I'm saying I could have done this or I could have done this. Okay, now I'm going to solve for x. So now this is just algebra. So I'm going to add 2, so I get a 7 or a negative 3. For some reason, I get this idea, so don't do this, but I get people who solve this and then they try to answer 7 or negative 7. That's not what you're doing. It's not plus minus the x value. It's plus minus the bracket piece, which is not the same as the x value. Okay, next one. So I'm going to set it up. The inside of the bracket could have been 11. Or the inside of the bracket could have been negative 11. Does that make sense? Okay, give me two x values using your algebra skills. So you're going to be minusing a 5. Okay, the next one, I'm not going to start yet. What do I have to do first before I start the process that I was just doing? I got to move that 5. So I'm going to add 5. And now I'm going to start that same process. So the process was this bracket piece could have been an 8 or the bracket inside could be a negative 8. Do you see on my work when I have the brackets still on there and then when I split it I drop my brackets because now I'm saying to you the inside could have been an 8. Okay so this one is a communication error if you put brackets on these pieces because now I'm saying the inside. What, this part? Yeah. You're saying it was a communication error. Uh, like if, if you put brackets, if you put like the square brackets on like that. So that's a communication yeah. yeah. Because at this point, you're trying to tell me the inside part can equal 8 or a negative 8. Okay, should we do some algebra here? So minus 2 is 6. Divide by 3. X equals 2. And then I minus 2 and divide by 3, leave is a fraction. Okay, next one, I'm going to subtract 5. So what do I know about this one? I already heard somebody say there's no solution for x. What's the reason? Absolutes can't be negatives. Absolutes cannot be negatives. You can't have a neg negative magnitude. All right, let's see if you can do this one on your own. It's exactly like this. 
So move the 20 part and then can you split? Okay, see if you can do this one on your own. Move the 20 and then split. If you are going to get fractions, just leave them if you know that they don't make a nice decimal or anything like that. Okay, how did it go? Did we match? Okay, can you flip? to this one that says graphing absolutes. Okay, so here's what we can think about when we graph. What happens when you absolute a positive number? Like the absolute value of 10, 10. So what happened? It stayed, right? The absolute value of 10 is 10. So it, it was just the same. What would happen if we absoluted the number zero? What's the absolute value of zero? Still zero. So it stayed. <clears throat> what happens if I absolute value a negative number. So for instance, what's the absolute value of negative five? Five. So what happens? It changes to positive. And those are the big rules. So if it's positive, it just stays there. Zero stays there. But absoluting a negative number changes. Okay, ready? So if I look at this graph, can you overlap this piece because it was zero or positive? Can you overlap <clears throat> this piece? Because this piece will stay. <clears throat> So this is what my grade 12s have been doing. Understanding that those parts of the graph overlap, they stay. Okay, now this part is all negative, as in negative heights, right? I'm looking at the y values. So that is gonna change. For instance, this coordinate one, negative three, will now go to, one comma, positive three. Okay, do you see a uh, reflection? Can you see that little part where I just kind of flipped it over positive? Okay, ready? I'm going to graph this, but first I'm just going to graph this function from grade 10. What do you know about this? And we're going to do it uh, lightly shaded, or like a, because it's not our graph, but I'm going to first do this. What do you know about graphing this and it's a line and you did it in grade 10? There was two things we would have done. M, X plus B. 
Do you remember what an M is and what a B is? M is your slope. M is your slope, which is your rise over your run. Remember those words from grade 10? Yeah? Everyone's just flowing back into your brain. You're like, we didn't do this. I don't remember this. And the B, remember what that was on a graph? Does it sound familiar if I tell you it's your y-intercept? Oh. Okay, so put a y-intercept at negative 5. Remember, we're going to do this nice and lightly, though, because it's not going to be our line. Okay, so now I'm going to go... How many x's is that right now? 1. one. So 1 is 1 over 1. So I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up like a staircase. I'm just going to kind of lightly draw it because it's not our actual graph. OK. Now we're going to do the absolute value of it. So what do I know? Which part of this graph stays? The positive or the zero part. So that part stays. Now what am I going to do with this bottom half? It is all negative. So negatives become positives. So for instance, remember we put this at 0, negative 5? Can you move it to a new spot? And that's what your graph is going to look like. If I'm ever going to ask you what the range of this function should be when you're done, what should the range always be? Do you remember the word range? What, it, what is the y values always going to be at the end? From what to what? This is the lowest height of 0 to infinity on those. Okay, the lowest height is, ha, can't be negative, right? Okay, last one. Graph the absolute value. So this was uh, a given, just drawn graph. Ooh, you know what? These ones had arrows on them, and this one doesn't. So make sure you don't put arrows on it. So that's a communication thing. So if mine has arrows, yours has arrows. If mine doesn't, yours doesn't. Okay, there's three sections of this graph that will stay put. Can you overlap them? Three sections on this graph will be the same. Okay, so those pieces, this is just going to make sure you can really clearly see it. Is that good? Those three sections stay. Now, these are the negative sections, so can you flip them up to the positive? Did anybody kind of see the height here? Seven, so it needs to go seven high.
There we go. So when you're graphing these, <clears throat> here's one thing I need to tell you about. I need to see that you have physically overlapped the part that should have overlapped. I get people who change the negative and then just leave the positive alone. I do need to see that you are understanding there's an overlap there. Okay, so make sure I can see that with your pen.